In this lesson, we're going to talk about the fundamental counting principle. This principle can help us to determine the total number of possible outcomes that can occur in a situation. And the way we get this number is by multiplying the number of outcomes that occur for each event within that situation. So let's look at this problem or situation that we're dealing with. How many different outfits can Mike have with two pants, three shirts, and two pairs of boots. So this situation or problem has three events. The first event has to do with his choice of pants that he's gonna wear. The second event has to do with which shirt he's gonna put on. And the third event has to do with which boot or pairs of boots uh, that he's gonna wear. So in the first event, he has two choices. He has two pants to wear. For the second event, he has three shirts. And for the third event, he has two boots. So if we multiply these numbers, two times two times three, we're gonna get 12 possible outfits that he can wear. And that's the answer. Now, to illustrate how this works, we could use a tree diagram to get the same answer. So for his first choice, he has two pants that he can wear, either white or black. Now, for his second choice, he has three shirts that he can choose from. I'm going to color code this. So he could choose a red shirt, he could choose a green shirt, or he can choose an orange shirt. And the same is true if he were to wear a pair, um, if he were to wear black pants. He can still pair that up with a red shirt, a green shirt, or an orange shirt. Now, for his next choice will be what color boots he's going to wear. And there's only two options here, purple or yellow. Now, if we follow the tree diagram, we can get all the different possible outcomes. He could wear a white shirt, I mean, a white pants, a red shirt, and purple boots. So that's going to be W, R, P. Or he could wear a white shirt, I mean, I keep messing that up, white pants, a red shirt, or yellow boots, which will be a weird looking outfit, but for the sake of this problem, we'll work with it. The next option could be WGP or WGY. Next is WOP and WOY. Now, he can also choose black pants, a red shirt, and purple boots. Or we could have BRY. Next, we could have BGY. I mean, BGP. Let's not skip that one and then BGY, and then we can have BOP and BOY. So notice that what we have is a total of 12 possible outcomes. Those are the different outfits that he can wear. And that's how the fundamental counting principle works. All we do is simply multiply the number of outcomes that can occur for each event or each choice that he's going to make. So for the first choice, he has, there's two possible outcomes. For the second choice, there's three possible outcomes. And for the third choice, two. So two times three times two gives us the 12 possible outcomes that we see for the entire situation. Now let's move on to the second problem. How many different telephone numbers are possible in the U.S.? if the three-digit area code followed by the seven-digit local telephone number cannot begin with a zero or a one. 
So here's an example of a telephone number. Let's say 357-486-1279. So that's a typical US telephone number. So this is the three digit area code. And what we have here is the seven digit local telephone number. So we can't have a zero or a one in those two spots. Knowing that, how can we determine how many different telephone numbers are possible in the US? So let's start with the first digit. So we have the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's 10 possible numbers, but we can't have a 0 or a 1. So we have 8 possible choices for the first spot. Now for the second spot, we can have any number from 0 to 9. So that's 10 possibilities. And the same is true for the third spot. Now for this spot, we can't have a 0 or a 1. So that's going to be eight possibilities. Everything else, we can have all numbers from zero to nine. So that's going to be 10 possibilities. So now we need to do the math. We're going to multiply eight by 10 by 10 by eight by 10 by 10 and by another four tenths. So we're multiplying two eights. That's eight squared. And we're multiplying that by 8 tenths. So that's 10 to the 8th power. 8 squared is 64. And this is going to be times 10 to the 8. Now let's put this in scientific notation. 64 is 6.4 times 10. 10 is the same as 10 to the 1. So when we multiply these two, we can add 1 and 8, which will give us 9. So our answer is 6.4 times 10 to the 9. 10 to the 9 is a billion. So our final answer is 6.4 billion, which you can write it like this if you want. So that's how many different telephone numbers that are possible in the US with the restrictions that we can have a 0 or a 1 for the first number for the area code and the first number for the local telephone number. For the sake of practice, let's work on one more question. A multiple choice quiz has four questions, each with five answer choices. In how many ways can you answer the questions? So let's say this is the first test question. This one's gonna be the second. This is the third. That's the fourth. So this situation has four events. In the first event or the first test question, you have five answer choices, likely A, B, C, D, E. For the next question, you also have five answer choices. And the same is true for the third and the fourth question. So you have five possible outcomes for each event, and you have four events. So this is going to be five to the fourth power, or five times five times five times five. Five times five is 25. And 25 times 25 is 625. So there's 625 ways in which you could answer the four test questions. So that's it for this video. Hopefully it gave you a good introduction into the fundamental counter principle and how you could use it to answer questions like these.